All right, so let's head over to MailChimp.com where we can go ahead and sign up for a new MailChimp account. And you don't need to worry about downloading anything here because MailChimp is browser-based. So whenever you need to do something email marketing related, you simply go to MailChimp.com, click on login, and then you log into your account. But first we have to set up your account. So we're gonna click on sign up free here on the top right. And then you simply need to type in your email address decide on a username and a password and then click on sign up here. Then on the next step, we have to confirm the email that we just used to sign up for MailChimp. So we simply head over to our email inbox and we get a mail that looks something like this, where we can simply click on activate account right here. And that will take us to this side right here where we have to confirm that we are not a robot. And that brings us to the account setup, where the first thing that we have to do is decide on a MailChimp plan. And there are four plans you can choose from. There's the free one, and then there's the paid plans where you get more features and also a higher contact limit. So with the free one, you get a maximum of 2,000 email contacts and a maximum of 10,000 emails per month that you can send. And um, that's mostly enough for a beginner. However, if you already have more contacts than 2,000, or you wanna have features that are only available in one of the higher plans, for example, if you wanna do email automations, then you're gonna to have to go for the standard plan at least. Um, what you also have to consider is that with the higher plans, the sta essential standard and premium, it depends on how many email contacts you have. So if you wanna go for a standard plan, then it, uh, if you have 500 contacts, it's gonna be $17 per month. But if you're gonna have 5,000 contacts, it's gonna be $90 per month. So the more contacts you have, the more MailChimp is gonna charge you for using their service. So I usually just recommend to start off with the free plan. And then whenever you notice that you need a feature that you don't have with the free plan or that you need more space, you need to have more contacts, then you can always upgrade to a higher plan. But for this video as well, we're also gonna start with the free plan. So I'm gonna click on next right here. Here, simply type in your name, business name, and if you want to, you can also put a website URL and your phone number. And now, as you can see, we have to type in a physical address because of international anti-spam laws, every email campaign that you send out to your email subscribers need to have a physical address at the bottom of the email. So you can either type in your personal address, your home address right here, which I wouldn't recommend because then every email subscriber will see your home address at the bottom of the email and that's not necessarily something that you want. So what is better is to put your business address if you have a business address or maybe to put a PO box address that will be put at the bottom of the email. So your home address will actually be kept private. Then here, let's say we don't have any contacts yet and we can skip these right here. Then here, I normally simply leave these unticked because otherwise you will get a lot of emails from MailChimp which I don't want, so I'm gonna click on continue right here. Great, and that will take us into your MailChimp dashboard. So here you're gonna see a kind of a guide that, want to, that wants to walk you through how to set up your MailChimp account. You don't need to worry about that because I'm gonna cover everything in this video here. And then on the bottom, this is what you're gonna see when you log into your MailChimp account in the future. This is basically an overview of kind of how your email campaigns are doing, like click-through rate, open rate, and so on, and also how many new subscribers you're gaining. So right now it's pretty boring here because you don't have any contacts yet, you don't have any campaigns set up yet. Um, then on the left side, you're gonna have all the menus that you're gonna use to navigate through MailChimp. And you can see that MailChimp does a lot more than just email marketing. You're gonna have the ability to create a website, you can create logos with MailChimp and all that fancy stuff. What we're gonna focus on in this video is simply email marketing because that is what MailChimp is good at. That's what MailChimp actually started out with. So um, simply follow along with this tutorial and then you're gonna learn all the main features and the basics here of MailChimp. So before we move on with setting up your MailChimp account, I wanna talk about something that you might struggle with, especially in the beginning of um, starting email marketing, which is getting your emails in your subscribers inbox. Your emails, you want them to end up here in the primary folder, which is the folder that people are actually looking at and not in the promotions folder, not in the junk folder. So there's a couple of things you need to know in order for your emails to actually end up in the inbox. And if you do this right from the beginning, 
then you're gonna have a much easier time also in the future getting your emails to your audience, which is the main goal of email marketing. One thing you have to make sure you do is to actually send valuable emails. Don't spam your audience and don't send emails that are not important um, for your audience because what email service providers like Gmail do, they track how many of your subscribers actually open your email, how many people read your email, how many people click on links in your email, and how many people reply to your email as well. So they want to know if people are actually engaging with your emails and that shows Gmail, for example, that your emails are actually valuable and they will kind of build trust with your email domain. And then in the future, they will continue to put your emails in the main inbox, in the primary inbox of your email subscribers, which is very important. So this is the first thing you can do. And then another thing that we're gonna just do in our MailChimp account is to authenticate our email um, address, our email domain, because this will uh, already build trust with email providers like Gmail, like um, AOL and so on. And it will make it already a bit easier to get your emails in the inbox. So it will increase your deliverability rate. So this is what we can do right now. So authenticate your emails using your domain. However, you're gonna need a, a domain for that. So you're gonna need something like medicsmedia.com, um, just a domain. I assume you already have a domain. If you don't, then you can skip this part right now, but I do recommend to get your own domain. And it's, it's something like $10 or something. So it's definitely worth the investment. Great, so let's head over to our MailChimp dashboard. And then we're gonna go to website right here on the left side and we're gonna click on domains. And then we wanna scroll down here where it says email domains and we wanna click on add and verify domain. And here you will simply wanna type in the email address that you wanna send out emails from. So I'm gonna use the domain medicstutorials.com for, uh, for this MailChimp account. So I'm gonna type in something like simon at medicstutorials.com. And it's very important that you actually have access to this email inbox and that you actually own this domain, obviously. So we're gonna click on send verification email. And now the next thing we have to do is to log into to our email inbox of this email address right here. And then we're gonna to have to get a code which we can then paste into this field right here. So here's the email that I just received from MailChimp. So here I'm gonna just copy this code we're gonna go back to MailChimp and then we simply paste this code in right here and then we can click on verify. And there we go, our domain is now successfully verified. So this is step one. So now when we scroll down, we can see that this domain is now verified. And the next thing we need to do is to actually start the authentication. So we're gonna click on start authentication right here. And then we need to decide on what email provider do we have. In my case, I have Bluehost. I'm gonna choose Bluehost right here. Maybe you have something else like GoDaddy, Google Domains or something like that. Make sure you actually choose what domain uh, is, what where your domain is on. Then we're gonna click on next. And then you're gonna see a short guide on how to get to your DNS record section of whatever provider you have. This right here is how to do it on Bluehost, which is what I'm gonna do in this video. Um, and then we can simply click on next right here. And here are the two CNAME records that we need to add in our DNS panel of our provider. Now you can try to follow along here and uh, do it yourself, which is what I recommend, because it's actually not that complicated if you do exactly what it says here. However, if you get stuck at some point, simply reach out to support of whatever provider you have. In my example, again, it's Bluehost, and then they will add those records here for you. So I'm simply gonna show you how to do it on Bluehost. So I'm gonna go to my DNS settings here of this domain that I've added on MailChimp. And then I'm gonna scroll down to where it says CNAME right here. And then I can cl simply click on add record and I'm gonna just paste whatever they give me here. So CNAME number one, I'm gonna click on copy and then I'm gonna paste this right here. And this points to um, this copy, paste this right here. And then I believe uh, the other one, we can simply use the four hours and then we can simply click on save. And just like that, we have added the first CNAM record and we're gonna do the same thing for the other CNAM record as well. So we're gonna click on copy right here and then we're gonna add another record, paste this again here 
and then copy the net, uh, the points to copy this here, paste this here. And then again, four hours, click save. And now we have added those CNAME records and that authenticates now our domain, which helps with our delivery rate. And um, normally this takes a couple of hours until this has propagated. So it's not gonna work immediately, but after like 24 hours, it should, it should work. And then as we can see here, MailChimp will send you an email once everything is finished and it can take up to 48 hours. And now the next thing we wanna do is go to our audience setting. So we're gonna go to audience right here. We're gonna go to preference center and then we're gonna go to settings and click on audience name and defaults. This is also something that you need to set up in the beginning and make sure everything is correct. And then you need, don't need to worry about that anymore. So the first thing is audience name. Um, for your email list, you're gonna have uh, an audience. So this is called audience. All the people are on a specific audience. Normally you only need one audience because you can segment people by using tags, for example, and you don't need multiple ones. Um, and then form settings, if you want to, you can enable double opt-in. That means that whenever somebody signs up to your email list, they will receive an email and then there they need to once again confirm that they actually want to be on your email list, which has the advantage that you will only get real email addresses and real people on your email list because they have to double opt-in. Um, but the disadvantage is that you might lose out on some email subscribers because they simply don't uh, they, they just simply don't reconfirm that they actually want to be on your email list. So personally, I just uh, leave this unticked because I don't need them to double opt in, but you can, you can tick this if you want to. So then we move on to campaign defaults here. Um, this is the name that they're going to see when you send them emails. So for me, I would just type in something like Simon and then Maddox Media. So they know my name and they also know kind of what company I'm from. And then the default email address. This is also important that this is the email address that they're gonna see where the email came from. So in my case, I would put something like simon at medixtutorials.com, which looks a lot more professional compared to having something like uh, medixmedia at gmail.com. And um, that's basically it here for the audience uh, settings. Yeah.